Well, g'day everyone. Uh, the people that have followed me over a long period of time would know that I get most of my work from doing weddings. Even though I am a YouTuber, I am also a full-time working photographer as well. And as I've got older, weight with carrying gear has become a huge issue. Now, particularly uh, because I shoot what I term as fusion, uh, where I'm shooting video and stills at the same time, often holding two cameras. And the thing that I really want to do is to really start getting rid of a lot of that weight that I'm carrying around. Uh, previously, I'd be shooting macro with my A6400 or the ZVE10 uh, with a macro lens on that. And now what I'm actually going to do after I've done some tests is I'm going to use my iPhone. Uh, and I think it's actually quite good enough. One of the things that I've been noticing with over all my time with the macro type photography, it's never anything that they will blow up to a large print. It's only ever, say, put into their wedding album or something like that. And the resolution that the iPhone has got, particularly the newer iPhones, is completely ample. In fact, um, if, if you shoot RAW, you've also got a lot of control too over the editing process as well. And that's what really interested me here. So Samark contacted me a while ago and asked if I'd be interested to look at a new lens that they've released, which is a 100mm macro. Now the system itself is obviously just your iPhone and you have to purchase the iPhone that you have uh, for the correct size. So you've got to make sure you do get the right one. And then the first part that you've got to attach to it is this little mount. So it's a case. Feels quite nice actually. Now it is only plastic though, um, but it does feel quite nice. Uh, very, very lightweight. And then you just simply slip your camera, your phone into the case. And it has nice cutouts so you can access everything very, very easily. And you have screw in parts that you have at the back here. Now on the side, there is a little um, line there. That you can just sort of see there. That shows you which uh, lens you've actually got to cover over with the uh, macro lens. So the lens itself comes in a, a little pouch, which is nice, and you can just take this out. Now inside this, uh, there was a little attachment that you can put on your phone if you want to. Let me just take this out. Uh, if you haven't got the case, you can just use this, and that just simply fits over the unit like this and it would fit over the lens that you had to attach. So that's how that works, and then you'd screw that in. Um, I've got the case though, so I don't need to worry about that, but just be aware you can do that if you want to. And then the other part to the system is the lens itself. So like I said, it does come with a little carrying case and also a little lanyard here that you could attach to the case, I suppose, too, or even to this. This is also a cleaning cloth as well. Uh, now, if I take this out, really well made. It's all metal. Um, so, you know, they, they certainly don't um, do a cheap lens, that's for sure. It's all metal. You have a nice little lens cap that you've got on the front here that I can just take off. And then you can see the lens that's there. And they have a little, at the back, a little lens cover there too that you can just take off as well. So that's it. So the lens itself is great. Uh, and it feels really well made and very, very solid. Then all you do is you just grab your phone and you just screw this into the phone itself and that's it um, and then you can just use your your iphone app or whatever you want to use uh, to get that to work now the other thing too is i noticed too that it's got filter threads here and i have got a couple of filters here could use as well like this one here for instance is a nd filter this is a nd8 and it's a 46 mil so if your filters would have to be 46 mil now you can then screw this on if you wanted to. So you could even use filters as well if you wanted to do video and slow it down um, and things like that. So you have got that ability as well. You can also grab obviously uh, iPhone mounts and things like that if you wanted to really hold this steady and I did do that when I shot a bit of video. But this is how the system works. Very, very simple. So you can just carry around a couple of these. And in fact, I've done a video before. I'll see if I can link it down below where I use the Sandmark anamorphic lenses. They were so much fun and I do use them now all the time. But this is a great system and it's certainly one that I'm gonna be able to use in weddings. So let me show you sort of the results. A lot of people will be thinking, why don't you just use the macro lens? And the macro lens on the iPhone is actually very, very good. The issue is though that everything stays in focus. As you can see here that uh, it, it's all in focus. The, the flower obviously is in focus with nice detail, but the background itself is also in focus as well. There's just not enough depth of field to get to throw that out. So that's the type of effect that you'll get with the iPhone. But if you look here at what this gives you, you get that beautiful rendering 
but you also get the out of background focus. It, it's you just can't see the background anymore. Now this is the uh, one times, and then if I go to two times, you'll see that it's. Uh, blown up even closer so you, I'm just using the iPhone app to go one times and then two times. Uh, if you want to have a look at how this looks I'll just show you that you can see here that the, the iPhone itself is very very sharp as well but if we go to this one you'll see that you've got that quite sharp edges here where it's all in focus so you can see there where it's all in focus. Um, if we go to the next one you can see there too how sharp this lens actually is. So that's the main reason why you would use something like this. See that the issue is is that with the iPhone if you use it with its standard macro in I'll just show you an image. So you can see here I, I just took a screenshot of uh, an actual video from Sanmark but you can see here how close you have to get. Now this has the 25mm macro on this so even then it's getting close but if you're using the standard macro lens on the iPhone you have to get even a little bit closer than that. Now there is some issues with that obviously you can get good results but this is totally blocking the light that's getting to it so you often have to light up through here as well. The other thing too is if you wanted to say shoot uh, things like insects and stuff like that you're too close to them whereas if you had the 100mm macro on it uh, you would get further away. And the other issue like I said with the iPhone one particularly is you don't get any real depth of field that's there as well. So that's the issue with using the standard iPhone one. Whereas using the 100mm macro you can see now how much further you, you get away from the image itself. So you've got much more room to work, you've got much more light that, that can actually get onto the subject and like I said if you are shooting images uh, like you know insects and stuff like that you're not so close to the insect that you would scare it away. So that, that's a real big factor of how this all works. So what I'll do is I'll just show you some of the images that I've taken. I've just gone around the garden just to take a few images just to sort of show you what they look like. So you can see here uh, what a lovely result you can get. In fact it, it's like it's actually incredibly sharp. Uh, you can see through here all the detail and everything that's been held here. Um, it really is sharp. Now one of the great things too here is sometimes I do have a tendency particularly when I'm doing wedding photography that I take too long trying to get the macro shots because you've got to manually focus, you've got to try and get it so it looks perfect. Whereas with the iPhone when you're doing it you, what you see is what you get. Now if you wanted to use other apps well then you could manually focus as well. Uh, I just used the iPhone app and it, it, it was great. I just locked the focus in and it was great how it looks. So, you know, and that is quite acceptable for what I would be giving for um, brides and things like that. Uh, I'm really quite happy with it. And like I said, it's a very, very easy setup. Let's keep going through and I'll just show you another one. That's, I've just converted this one to black and white. You can see through here again, you know, your diamond that you're looking at, all the sharpness through here. Uh, is all there. So it's it's looking terrific actually. I mean I'm, I'm really happy with how it looks. Uh, another one here is just some jewellery that you can see as well down the bottom. I've just put these all on a, a bit of a marble tabletop that you can look at. Uh, you know and it's I think it's it's totally acceptable for what I would be using with my work particularly uh, when they're only going to be putting these inside their wedding album something like that or a slideshow. Again this is another one that I just wanted to bring in. Uh, you can see here that um, it's the fall off is lovely like you're getting that nice depth of field there in the background and the um, diamonds themselves are nice and sharp through here. I mean yes look if you're using a really good macro lens like a Sony 90mm you are going to see a difference but from what I'm seeing it's not really an issue because they never ever use these images large it's they're like I said they're only ever used in a in a wedding album or something like that so this was just on the one times uh, lens and then if I went up to the two times lens you get that and the three time lens was that another one here was just shooting this little daisy that we've got in the garden here Again, you can see the difference coming from there to there. Uh, if I blow that in, you can see it's actually focused on the from there to there. You'll also see uh, the rendering difference as well. This is, like I said, this is the one times. And then when I went to the two times, you can see the difference that that is with the background rendering. When I went to three times here, uh, you can again see how beautiful it blows that background away. Uh, this was another one that I did at the three times, just to sort of show you what that looks like. Uh, this was one I just wanted to shoot inside just to sort of see what they look like uh, indoors. Um, I, I really like the look of it actually. So what do I think about it? Well I actually think it's terrific. In fact 
I'm no longer going to take my um, macro lenses. I'm just going to use this because it, it's completely acceptable for what I would be using. I love the fact that you can see exactly what you're getting on the back of the screen and check it immediately to see if it's any good or no good. Um, I really do like that. I love the depth of field that it gives you as well, and it's actually sharp. And I think it would be perfect for what I'm doing. And in fact, it's going to let me take less gear to my weddings, which is probably the most important thing for me particularly. I think it's great. I think for the um, size that this is, uh, the portability that this is, and also the build quality that this is, yes, the, the case... Uh, may be the only issue. I, I'm not sure whether, I know when I had the previous case you could get metal versions of these. I'm not sure whether this comes with a metal version. This being plastic, there is a possibility, I suppose, that you could break the mount if you weren't careful. But apart from that, I think everything is terrific. And thank you so much, Sanmark, for sending me this. Uh, and I'll certainly be using this in a coming wedding that I'm doing in a, next weekend, actually. So apart from that, everyone, uh, I'll see you all in the next video. And um, bye for now.